Today's video is going to be on how to replace the hood supports, or they call them struts, they call them shocks, but they're uh, basically on a 2000 Lexus GS300, I believe the GS400 or 430, they're the same thing, the same part number. But here is the uh, piece that we're going to replace, this one. It's got a 12 millimeter bolt there, and then down there it's also 12 millimeter. You just basically you unbolt them and you bolt the new ones in, but I'll show you how to do it. First thing you want, want to do is support the hood so that it doesn't collapse on you when you're doing this. You can see these are really worn. They just The hood just barely stays up, uh, and it's only when it's really hot. So uh, you don't want to get hurt, and it's definitely not worth the risk. These uh, used to be about $100 a piece plus, but now they've come down. I got a pair from O'Reilly, and I'll show you the part number. And uh, these are lifetime guarantee which is great if you're one of those people that keeps your car forever. And basically, there's your part number right there. Like I said, O'Reilly lifetime guaranteed, so it'll be the last ones you uh, have to pay for. Okay, so I've got my hood support, which is basically a paint rod, adjustable paint rod. Uh, it's for a roller brush. And here you go. Here's the top one. You're basically just going to loosen that up. Now remember, these support the hood, so you've got to have the hood supported And uh, when you take these off. So we'll take them off one at a time. It's a pretty easy job. The hardest part is probably just finding something to prop the hood with. Now, as it comes out, it may fall down because I've got one hand on the camera. Unfortunately, I don't have a helper today. Okay, so there we go. Now that rod is on the other side, but you'll notice that the hood is fully supported. We go down here, same 12 millimeter. This one's considerably looser than the other side. So, can't really reach in there. So we're just gonna take that out and replace it. There's really no use for these uh, strut rods other than the ends. If you want the ends, you could possibly make your own um, maybe you have a classic car or something and you want to add strut uh, supports to it. Sometimes these don't come with the ends. They're little bald ends and they're threaded in. Uh, but other than, you know, saving, trying to grind this off or cut it off and save the hardware, really there's uh, no use for these. Unfortunately, in our disposable society, this thing's just going to go in the garbage. Now, I always recommend comparing your parts before you install them and never throw your old parts away until you've verified that the new parts are in and are actually working. And this is where we get to see that there is a difference because it didn't come with any hardware and the ends on this are basically sealed. Um, we're gonna have to find a way to cut this open in order to make these work. But actually, you know, in looking at this, I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah, I think we're going to have to remove this clip and then hope that the ball that's in here is the correct size to go into this right here and then you slide the clip back on. So, it looks like we got more work ahead of us. So, now I'm going to have to cut this ball out of here somehow. I think what I'm going to do is probably just take a, a high-speed cutter and just cut this off. Um, it's in there really really tightly. I don't think they just pop out. Maybe they do. I'll try that first. I did explain what I've done so far. Um, there is a little spring retainer here and there's this ball. This is the part that you need but it goes in here and then the spring retainer kind of holds it in place. So first I tried prying it with a pair of uh, needle nose and it did not work. So then I thought well you know what um, I'm just going to grind it and what I did was I took it to a bench grinder just like this and I grinded the edge like that and the other thing that I did was I did not want the stud that I'm trying to get out damaged by the grinder so I just um, pushed a little hose on it like this and pushed it into this piece and then with one hand I would pull it back and make sure it cleared the grinder then I grinded the edge of that and I got it out pretty far to where the clip was exposed, the spring clip, and then I took a screwdriver and a hammer and tapped the clip out till it was about halfway out. 
And from there, I used a crowbar to get in between right here on the ball, and then I put it in a vise, and then I pried with the crowbar like this, and then it finally popped out. Now, because there's that circlip, you would think that you could just use a crowbar and pop it out. Well, here's the result on the other side. See, I clamp this into the vise, I put the crowbar around here, and as I pull, it dislodged. It's ready to break off. So I'm going to go back to plan A. I'm sure somebody might chime in and say, oh yeah, there's an easy way to do it. Right now, it's not working out for me. So I'm just going to put the hose on here, and I'm going to grind around here just like I did on the other side to remove it. Through all the trouble of removing four of these balls, I figured I better check the new part to make sure that, that my theory is right. You pry this clip out, drop this in, and then the clip will hold in around those shoulders. You see how the clip has got those uh, little tabs that they should hold around these shoulders. One more view. There's the clips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my screwdriver and I'm going to put it right into this piece right here like that. And that's exactly what it looks like it's made for. So I will put it in and then I'll just pry it over. Now again, I'm doing this with one hand, uh, with my left hand. And if I can do it with my left hand, it should be a piece of cake with my right since I'm right handed. That drops in there, it seems to fit perfectly. Managed to get the clip. And again, the clip goes right in this groove and there's a matching groove on the other side. So I'm going to use both hands and put it in there. Okay, so here's a little tip. When you're moving that clip, don't take it off all the way because it's harder to put the clip on than it is to um, take it off. So if you don't put it in all the way, the ball will still slip in like that. And then all you simply have to do is slide the clip back into place. Now the clip will hold your stud. So one down, three to go, and the procedure's pretty much the same, but now I'm going to grind this end on the factory ball and I'll show you uh, how that works out. Okay, so once again, there's my hose and I'm going to use that with my left hand like this to keep the uh, piece that I want, the stud, from hitting the grinding wheel and ruining it. You got to be real careful about grinding right here and you're going to do that in about a half semicircle. Then you should be able to pry this thing apart. I'm hoping it doesn't uh, break off of here and become really, really difficult to remove. But um, that's my plan. So I'm going to turn this off, use both hands, get in the grinder. Remember to wear safety equipment. Okay, so far this is what I've got. And I'm trying to stay away from the ball. But I'm going to keep grinding until I expose about half of that ball. Then I'm just going to use a crowbar and pry it off. Okay, you can see that I'm whittling away at it and I'm trying to stay away from that ball. Okay, so I've got the body of the, the um, strut or support in the uh, vice. Remember, this is under high pressure. Even though it's worn out, it's still under high pressure. And if you see right there, and I'll show you because it's still hot, that right there is the retaining ring. So I'm going to stick a screwdriver in, try to pop that out with a screwdriver and a hammer. Once I can get that retaining ring out, I think I should be able to pop out the ball out of its joint. And you can see it's flexing all over the place. So I'm, you know, I'm getting, I'm working at it. It's getting there. And it um, shouldn't be too hard. And there's that ring. It's spring steel because it uh, clamps the ball in place. So we're going to remove that. See that little ring end right there? That's what we need to get out. And that will give us enough room to pull the ball out. That's it for this one. Okay, so I thought what I would do is show you how that spring comes out. And there it is. And I grab it with the pliers. And then I'm just going to pull it from around that ball. And um, it's kind of hard because I'm using the camera's viewer as my eye because I want to make sure that you guys can see what's going on. And there we go. There's the spring keeper. And the ball is coming right out. So that's two down, and I got two to go. Same procedure on the other side.